Welcome home. Welcome home to First Christian Church of Decatur. We are delighted to see you and we'll hope that you are well. Um, let me just turn this little thing off here. There we go. Okay. And okay, hold on. Welcome home. Welcome to First Christian Church of Decatur. Okay, now we're there. So I'm James Brewer Calvert, and my pronouns are he, his, and him. And I'm delighted to welcome you to our 601 Wednesday live midweek check-in. This is good to be here. I want to thank Kaylee Hargrove for stepping in last week and doing a marvelous job. Thank you so much, Kaylee. And to one and all, we wish you well. We're going to open tonight with a meditation, and it's going to be a story. This is a story that that uh, I, I hold near and dear to my heart, and I trust that you might know this story as well. So if you know the story, tell it along with me. Feel free. Uh, I want everybody to check in and let us know you're here. And if you know the story, then feel free to join in, and in the telling and the sharing and the enjoying. And if this is a first time for you, you're in for a treat. The story is called Stone Soup. Stone Soup. So once upon a time, there were three soldiers and they were trudging down a long dusty road and they were on their way home from the war. They were in a strange land. They had to go through one land to get to another. And on their way, they grew very hungry and they had not eaten. The first soldier said, I am so hungry. I have not eaten in two days. And the second soldier said, and I am so tired. I have not slept in forever and I'm tired of sleeping in the woods. And the third soldier said, there's a village up ahead. Maybe we can find a place to stay in the village. They'll probably say no and they probably won't feed us, but there's no harm in asking. So they got to the village, but on their, just before they arrived, the villagers saw them coming. And the villagers were afraid. They were afraid because soldiers tend to be hungry and soldiers tend to take. And soldiers were scary and they didn't know what to do. So they hid their food. They put the um, barley sacks and underneath their beds and they put the buckets of milk down in the wells where they couldn't be seen and they spread old quilts over the carrot bins and they hid their cabbages and potatoes in sacks underneath their cupboards and they hung the meat in the cellars where no one could find them and when the soldiers entered the village the first one said we are so hungry it does do you, say, do you have anything to eat? And they, when they knocked on the door of Albert and Francois, and Albert said, no, no, it, we are so hungry ourselves. We have not eaten as well. It has been a hard harvest, a very poor harvest indeed. And the second soldier said, well, well we're very tired. Do you have any place where we could rest? And Francois said, no, no, our home is full. We, we don't even have enough beds for ourselves. I'm sorry, you're going to have to go someplace else. And so they went down to the next home and the soldier knocked on the door and he said, we are three hungry and tired soldiers. Do you have anything to eat? And Paul said, no. No, we, we, we are so hungry. Our, our cattle are not producing and it's just the goats and the sheep are just skinny as anything. I'm sorry, we don't have anything. And, and Louise said, and our home is so full and there's no room here. Have you tried the inn? Maybe they've got something for you. So the soldiers went from door to door and no one had any food or any room to share. And so they gathered in the middle of the town square and the three soldiers talked amongst themselves. 
And the first one said, well, there's only one thing to do. We must make stone soup. And the second soldier said, yes, yes, that, that is the thing to do, stone soup. We, it's the only solution. And the third soldier said, you know, I think that's right. Let's try. Stone soup. We've never heard of stone soup before. What, what is that? And the first soldier said, well, to make stone soup, the first thing you need is a large kettle. Big, uh, who's got the biggest iron kettle in the whole village? That's what we need. And, and Louise said, we've got the biggest iron kettle in the village. We can provide that. And so she did. And the soldier said, the second soldier said, well, now to put in the kettle, we need lots of water. We need to fill it up almost to the top with water and we need a fire. And the children of the village said, oh, we can do that. And they ran and they got buckets of water and they got sticks and kindling and, and wood and, uh, and matches. Yes, children can handle matches as well. And they brought it all into the village and they started the fire and put the water in the bucket and they put the bucket on the, the fire and it started to boil. The soldier said, hmm, what this needs is some salt and pepper. Oh, wait, 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 before we get to the salt and pepper, wait, wait. What this needs is three smooth stones. Yes, before we even think about salt and pepper, stone soup must have three smooth stones. And the villagers said, well, you know, we don't have any food and we don't have any place for you to stay, but rocks we got. We got rocks. How about, uh, how about over there? And they went and they got three round, smooth stones. And the soldiers looked at them and said, these are perfect for stone soup. And they smoothed them and cleaned them and put them in the boiling water. And then they said, you know, what we need is some salt and pepper. At which point the children, who are so resourceful and amazing, the children said, we know where the salt and pepper is kept. And they all scattered and ran to their homes and came back each with some salt and some pepper. And they put it into the boiling water with the three stones. And the soldier said, mmm, yes, yes, it's starting to go good. Um, you know, you know what would really make a difference is if we had some carrots. Carrots, that's what we need. We need some carrots. It's just so bad that there's no carrots in the entire village for stone soup. Well, at that point, she said, well, we've got some carrots. Um, I know where some carrots are. And she ran home and she lifted up the, the quilt that was on top of the bin with the carrots. And she put some carrots in her apron and she put some carrots around her arm and she brought all the carrots she could back to, back to, the, to the village square. And the soldiers and the villagers chopped up the carrots and put them in the boiling water with the salt and the pepper and the three smooth stones. And the soldier said, oh, yes, starting to smell good, starting to smell good. It's just too bad we don't have any cabbages. You know, carrots and cabbages, they go so well together. But it's been a hard harvest and the gardens aren't producing. I understand if you don't have any cabbages. And one of the villagers said, oh, oh, wait, wait, cabbages. We've got cabbages. Of course we've got cabbages. And went and went underneath their bed and they pulled out a whole sack of cabbages and brought that out. And the villagers gathered around and they chopped up the cabbages and they put it in the boiling water with the carrots and the salt and the pepper and the three smooth stones. Mmm, it started to smell good. It started to smell so good. And the soldier said, you know, 
You know what would make this fit for a rich person's table? If it had some potatoes. Oh, potatoes would make all the difference in the world. And the villagers said, potatoes? Oh my goodness, we've got potatoes, and ran to their homes, and the villagers came out with their potatoes, and they chopped them up and sliced them up and put them in the water with the boiling salt and the pepper and the carrots and the cabbages and the potatoes and the stones, and it smelled so good, and the aroma was filling the village square. And the soldier said, you know, you know what would fit a, the table of a king and a queen would be some barley and maybe a little bit of meat, mm, just a little you know, flavoring of meat. And the villager said, barley? Oh, I know where we can find some barley. And someone else said, I know where we can find some meat. And someone else said, and I know what we can do. Let's put it all in. And they put it all in and it started to be great. And then the soldier said, you know what? It is ready. It's time to eat stone soup. But where are we going to eat? And the villager said, let's make a table in the village square. And they brought out their tables. And they, and they, they <laughs> it was a very fancy table. They brought out their tables and people brought their bowls and their spoons. And someone else said, hey, what, what you need at this feast is bread. And I've got some bread. And someone else said, I've got some butter. And someone else said, I'm going to make a floral arrangement and put it in the middle of the table so we have a centerpiece. And the village had a big, long table spread out, and it was a banquet. And the folks sat back, and they ate, and they dined, and they laughed, and they feasted and enjoyed each other's company at the feast of stone soup. And when it got dark, people were tired. It was time to go to bed. And the soldier said, ah, oh, I guess we must be traveling on even though we are so tired. If only we had a place to spend the night. And the villagers said, you can stay with us. And another villager said, you can stay with our family. We will make room for you. And, another, and the soldiers went and they stayed with the villagers' homes and they slept well and they rose the next morning and got ready to move on their way. And the villagers said, you know, we never knew you could make soup from stones. And the soldiers said, you know, it's all in the knowing how. I don't know if that's a true story, but there's a lot of truth in that story. There's a lot of truth. I'm going to guess that you've seen stone soup come to life in your lifetime. I'm going to guess that I have too. That we've seen people refuse to live with the fear of scarcity. The fear of scarcity. Oh my goodness. I've got to lock up and hoard and keep whatever little bit I've got or a lot of bit I got so no one else can have it because it's mine and I'm afraid of loss. We've seen so many people put that fear aside and decide that they will intentionally live in the abundance of love with the abundance of grace with the extravagance of the plenty that God provides each and every day, with the faith and the trust that there is enough. There is enough. There is enough to share, and there's even more. There's basket loads of crumbs left over an overabundance. We live in a world of an overabundance of plenty to share. All we need to do 
is make stone soup. It's all in the knowing how. As we prepare for our announcements, I'm going to share that uh, we, we are seeing stone soup come into being in our congregation and in our community. Our congregation is beginning in the very early stages of resettling a refugee family from Afghanistan. I've got people stopping me in the hallways of our church and in the outside in a parking lot saying, what are we going to do to resettle a refugee family? We want to help. It's not my idea, it's God's idea. We're going to see an extravagance of love in our youth ministry as we go out into the church park and playground and share God's love with God's people. Every Sunday between 2 and 3, we're going out and meeting new families and having fun and sharing God's love with children from all walks of life. And we see the abundance in worship. We are open again. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Our sanctuary is open. We are worshiping with masks on and socially distant, but we are together in God's house on Sunday morning at 1025. And we are gathering for Sunday school in, or spiritual formation, whatever you want to call it, but we're gathering in the Pathfinders room at 915 and as well um, on Zoom with the children at 930. There's a lot happening. And the last announcement I want to share is something that we're just, it just happened. So it's coming up on us fast, but we just found out that we're going to be hosting the Atlanta Musicians Orchestra on Sunday at 2 o'clock in the sanctuary. This, this is a classic grade A orchestra of musicians in our community and in our city, and they are coming to our sanctuary on Sunday at two o'clock to play some amazing pieces of music. Um, I think they're asking a donation at the door, so y'all come, and uh, don't have to worry about missing the Falcons game because they play at 930, and you can DVR the game while you're in church. That's what I'll be doing. All right. Uh, may God's blessings and peace be with you. And may we continue to make stone soup together each and every day. It's all in the knowing how. Take care. Good night. See you Sunday.